It's been an incredible journey. I don't think I've ever worked quite so hard in my life. But on the other hand, I don't think I've ever done something quite so worthwhile. People have a, a misconception about the troops coming back injured and the leg missing or an arm missing. We're not disabled. I've just got one arm missing you. And that's the attitude that most of the troops have. And we get through this because of our determination to be viewed in that way. I've been very surprised by the public support that Health Heroes has received. Previously, when we were fighting in Afghanistan, we thought the public didn't care that much about us, and it's refreshing to know that they actually do. We launched Help for Heroes in October 2007 as a response to the desire of ordinary people to do something practical to help the wounded coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq. Our first task was given to us by General Sir Richard Dannett, and he suggested that we help raise money to provide a swimming pool and gym complex at Headley Court. We thought that it would take at least a year to raise six million pounds, so we were amazed to be able to do that by the 1st of June. The work has started in November of 2008, and we're promised that it'll be finished by Christmas of 2009. We've been able to help Safa. They had an appeal to raise money for relatives' houses, so we've been able to give them half a million pounds. We've also been able to help two military initiatives, Toe in the Water, which is competitive sailing on yachts, and Battleback, which is a range of adaptive adventure training opportunities. We did our own bike ride this year, it took about 275 people, including a team from Headley Court, through the battlefields of northern France and finishing up at the Cenotaph in London. And it was a phenomenal success, it raised 1.4 million alone. We're going to repeat that again next year. In this case, it'll be going through Normandy and down to finishing in Paris. We're going to climb Kilimanjaro, we're going to have a team going up to John O'Groats. A group of us are going to go down to the Sahara and do a desert challenge. It's not them who call themselves heroes, it's us, we think they're heroes. We think that anybody who volunteers to join the armed forces, knowing that they may well have to fight for their country, we consider that voluntary act is in itself an act of heroism. Our wounded servicemen need your help, and that's what it's about. It's about doing your bit. It has made a difference, it needs to go further, so please keep it coming. For the next 12 months, what we want to try and do is have what we call strategic partners. So we will find people who need money that haven't got the capital. And one particular one is Combat Stress, who look after post-traumatic stress disorder. And so we're delighted to be able to give them three and a half million. In the longer term, we are hoping to be involved in what we call the third phase of rehabilitation. So once the servicemen come out of Headley Court, we want to see another place where they go, where they have opportunities for both employment, education, adventure training and so on what we call a launch pad to life. We all at Help for Heroes work very hard, but having met the wounded, you can't help but feel motivated. It is like nothing you can ever prepare yourself for. Your life completely and utterly changes in every way. Emotionally, you are set back to a five-year-old where you're learning to walk again. It takes so much strength, energy and support to get back onto the wagon and just actually get on with it. Try and focus on a career, try and focus on goals, aspirations. It's difficult, it's very, very difficult. It's tough and I don't recommend it. If I were a wife or mother of one of the wounded at Headley Court, I would want them to have the very best. And that's what Help for Heroes is all about.